so I know you must be as excited as I am because it is time to talk about comma splices. Let's start with a definition. Uh, a comma splice is just when you have a sentence and another sentence, each of which could stand on its own, connected with a comma in the middle. And those are not grammatically correct, so if you see a comma splice, not going to be a right answer. And they'll most likely pop up on the improving sentences questions. Now, let's look at a few comma splices. First example, Barack Obama was a junior United States Senator from 2005 to 2008. And then there's our comma, and we have another sentence that could stand on its own. In 2009, he became the 44th President of the United States. So again, this is a comma splice because there's a sentence before the comma, there's the comma, and a sentence after. Not grammatically correct. One more example here. The pastime that Americans call soccer is a sport played between two teams of 11 players. Could you see how that could stand on its own? And then a comma, and another sentence that could stand on its own. It is called football in most other countries. Okay, one more example. The French city of Lyon and its surrounding towns make up the second largest metropolitan area in France. There's a sentence, there's our comma in orange, and another sentence. Paris boasts the largest metropolitan area. So now that you understand what comma splices are, let's see how you can go about fixing them. So there are three ways we can fix the comma splice problem. First of all, we can take that comma and turn it into a period. Second, we can take the comma and turn it into a semicolon. And third, we can insert a conjunction. Now this last one is a little complicated, so let's take some time to really elaborate on that here. First of all, there are two different classes of conjunctions. The good news is you don't need to know what they're called, but we've labeled them just so you can absorb the big picture. So first of all, we have coordinating conjunctions, and you can remember them because they spell fanboys, right down the side here. Now, if you want to use a coordinating conjunction to solve a problem with comma splices, all you have to do is put the coordinating conjunction between the two sentences. We'll see an example in a second. The other option is to use this other kind of conjunction. That's a subordinating conjunction. And you can actually solve the problem with comma splices by putting that kind of anywhere. You can put it at the beginning of the first sentence, or you can put it in between the two sentences, just like the other kind of conjunction. So let's see what that looks like in action. First of all, we have a sentence that's a comma splice. I like coffee, comma, she prefers tea. That's sentence. I like coffee, comma, she prefers tea, another sentence. So it does have to be fixed, and let's look at the two methods. First of all, we could use a coordinating conjunction. Those are the fanboys conjunctions, and we chose to use the B from fanboys. So we have, I like coffee, but she prefers tea. Problem solved. Or we can use the subordinating conjunctions. And there are actually two examples here because, as you may recall, subordinating conjunctions can fix comma splices in two ways by being placed at the beginning of the sentence or between the two sentences. So here's the beginning and here's the middle. Let's just read through, see how they sound better already. Whereas I like coffee, she prefers tea. I like coffee, whereas she prefers tea. Those both fix the problem with comma splices. So now that we've covered the three ways to fix comma splices, with periods, with semicolons, and with conjunctions, let's see them apply to the examples that came up earlier about Barack Obama, football, in France. So we can turn the comma that used to be here into a period. 